Hello, my name is Jean Helms, and I am the Administrative Director at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, and I would like to welcome Dwayne Mays, who is the President of the Lincoln Branch of the NAACP here today for our Share the Plate program. Welcome. Thank you and for this opportunity, and hopefully I can shed some information about NAACP that you may not know or or if it's things that you know already, then uh, somewhat emphasize and just to update you on some things that we may be doing within the community. And just as everybody else, we've been, our, our, our activities have been curtailed somewhat as a result of COVID-19, but we are realizing now that COVID-19 has just caused us to change our strategies. And so we will still here serving the community as a civil rights organization uh, where we try to help people who have civil rights problems or need advice or sometimes just uh, to emphasize our, our, our what's needed to be done. Also, we are sought for advice on some of the civil rights activities within our city uh, in, in our leadership within our city. Uh, because sometimes we, we don't claim to be the voice of black people or people of color within our community, but we do have a relationship there that allows us to have a, uh, be able to hear and to be ears and to be uh, encouragement when things occur within our community. Right. Some of the things that some of the things that we are we're doing and we, we certainly are uh, promote uh, education within our community. And certainly as we have taken on some activities where we're working, trying to work with the school school and the school board and trying to assure that kids of color receive uh, the same quality of education that other kids within the school system receive. And as we begin to look at statistics there, we find that students of color are not receiving the same education that other students are receiving. Mm -hmm. And because their reading level is lower, they're, they're, uh, they tend to have a lot more problems. And many times we strictly blame that on, on, on financial uh, uh, poverty, uh, poverty is, is usually the answer. But mm -hmm. when we start to look at poverty, we find that there are so many aspects to it and so many causes of it. Mm -hmm. If we look, for instance, if we look at a student and we talk about reading and we look at, at that student and their family, look at it closely, we find that their parents have a problem with reading or can't read. And so if they can't read, then how can they help their students to, to achieve, may, reach their maximum in achievement? Mm -hmm. So those are things that, that, that we are looking at. We're trying to work with the local school board in, in some of those kinds of activity. Also, we talk about SROs within the school system. And I know that there are some people who see that as a as a uh, uh, a security for their ch children, but when we look at the children of color, we find that the the way they view uh, officers or law officer as opposed to uh, a white student is different because most of their interaction with a a officer has been when something has gone wrong. Yeah. And as a result, when they, they associate that, when they see that uh, officer, they're gonna associate bad things. Whereas with many of the white students, uh, when they see an officer, is somebody there to help them. And there's a, there, there's a difference. If you are in a learning community and you see someone who uh, distracts you, Mm -hmm. then that affects your, your ability to comprehend. And yes. many times that uh, has not been taken into consideration. And also when they are, they, they are there, many times they are there, to, the, uh, we notice that 
students of color are usually uh, more harshly uh, disciplined. Absolutely. Than white, yeah. than white counterparts. So those are kinds of things that we look at and we try to try to be a voice for those students because many times the parents may not be there, they may not be there to voice their, the, uh, uh, their, their concern. Mm -hmm. And we want to be there to be a voice for those students. So therefore we uh, try to monitor and to work with the board and the uh, administrators in being aware of those kinds of things and probably where there are problems, for instance, with the expulsion rate mm -hmm. for students of color is three to four times more than their counterparts. Yeah. And so when that, that so th and a lot of that is because they may not have what people who understand them. The, the, these are students of color. They don't see uh, many teachers who look like them and the association, and if you talk to a, a teacher of color who works with students within the school system, they approach and, and they're working with those students of color is different from the way white uh, teachers work with them. Because first of all, my wife is, uh, is a retired school teacher. And so I, I guess I feel like I have a special uh, uh, understanding. I'm not an educator, but my wife is. And so she talks about how, tells a story about when one student was was keeping up, uh, having a, 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 a bad day. And so she was keeping up a lot of noise and causing a disturbance in the hall. And, and how she quietly walked up to the student in and touched her and said, what's, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. And she was just irate. And mm -hmm. so she told us, that, now wait a minute, what would you, what would, what do you think your mom would say if she heard you? I said, do you want me to call her? Oh, no, 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 Ms. May, please don't call my mom. She said, well, if you don't want me to call your mom, you better go to class and do what you're supposed to do. I, I, I'll go to class. I'm on. So, you know, it was that simple in solving that problem, but other teachers were having a problem with her. Yeah. So sometimes having that kind of relationship mm -hmm. makes a big difference and it eliminates some of the, the uh, actions that may have to be taken by the administration if it where they me. might expose somebody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. De-escalation within the school system is very important. Yes. And sometimes because uh, you have that commonality there, you know how to de-escalate the situation. Exactly. So that is... Are you, um, may I ask, are you um, ever in the situation where you are advocating for a specific student? Have you been put in that uh, position where you are stepping in as as a role with the administration as a a specific student no okay. but when there have been actions that have involved a, a number of students okay when there's a trend we, when you've identified a trend at a specific school great yes Okay. Well, I, I have had to step in when my, with my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think that makes a difference. It makes a difference because I, I think about it. if they if I had not known people within the system mm -hmm. and had not been involved in having my wife having worked in the system, mm -hmm. uh, the approach would have been quite different. But because we had that connection then we were able to resolve most time resolve the problem resolve the issue without a, a problem mm -hmm. and you know it, but there are many students or parents who don't have that and one of the things that we have tried to do is to counsel with parents and to help them to understand how to uh, navigate the system without causing a problem for their students and and for themselves right, right. Are there other ways um, 
that you promote education outside of the school we, LPS system? We have scholarships. And we, okay. in fact, we're we're approaching time within the next month that we will be advertising a, a scholarship. And within us, uh, our organization, each year, we try to give scholarships. And we've given up to uh, maybe $4,500 in scholarships in, in one year. And this year, we've, um, we've allocated $3,000 that we will give it up to three scholarships at one thousand dollars each, awesome. and so those those scholarships, the students are for students within the Lincoln Public School System who are doing things that uh, promote civil rights and activities that uh, that we are as an organization have uh, have supported within the community. Cool. So, so any student that wants to uh, who would be able to qualify or can qualify for for that scholarship. Awesome. Uh, I'll look for that to come out uh, so we can help amplify that. It's, it'll be a, okay. It'll be on our website. Okay. Um, we're we're in the process of trying to get it done within the next uh, couple of weeks a uh, week. Cool. Well, so um, I'd like to back up just a little bit and ask you how long you've been uh, with NAACP and had a role um, as the president? I've been the president for, this is my third year, but uh, I've been active in NAACP for over 20 years in, in this branch. And as a, when I grew up, I grew up in the South, uh, I was a youth member of NAACP. Okay. Um, so um, when you, were coming into, you know, working with NAACP, NAACP in Lincoln, um, were you, did you have other roles uh, previous to being president? I was treasurer for probably 18 years or so. Oh, wow, okay. 17, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, and, and being on the board of uh, being on the board of directors there, I, I I've had a role for quite some time. Okay. Are there other organizations in the city that you partner with on issues? Ye yes, we do. We we are partnering with uh, Nebraska for Peace on our Truth and Reconciliation project, and that is a project that uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm proud of it because we are making some great st strides. We just really come into full uh, action really to try to, uh, we set up a, a steering committee and we hired a bibliographer who is helping us, uh, who is a PhD candidate at UNL that will help us. And on our steering committee, we have uh, a number of people who are very, very qualified people who are helping us to, to uh, collect the information and get this information together. And within this project, what we're doing is we're looking at the history of racism within the city of Lincoln. And what we are trying to do is to look at those issues or those kinds of issues within our city that brought us to where we are. And we're not, we're not looking at just the good side of it, but we're looking at all sides of it that causes us to be who we are and mm -hmm. to hopefully be able to look at it and to understand who we are and what we need to do to be better, better, a better community. And learn from the history, good and bad, right? That's yes. great. Yes. So um, if somebody wanted to get involved with the Tru Truth and Reconciliation Project, how would they do that? If, if they will contact me uh, at uh, Dwayne Mays, uh, NAACP or Paul Olson at, okay. in Nebraskans for Peace or William Arf, Afrin, who is a, Arfman, who is a also a partner in there and and any of the members of the steering committee I, I maybe I should name them all but That's okay. uh, that <laughs> the, who those persons who are, are working with us that they are they are active in the community and who have, most most of us are retired. And okay. so we've had a role in uh, different areas there. And so 
this is something that is, is we're passionate about and that we uh, hopefully will be able to provide a good product for our community that will help us grow. Now, if if I can project a little bit, um, is is it safe to say that once that project is done, then there may be action steps that are developed based on the information as far as changes that we want to make in the city or improvement? We would certainly. Okay. We would certainly hope so. We would certainly hope so. But the information will be there and it will be made available in, in digital form and uh, in, if it, it may be in, in other forms as well. And also there, uh, it offers some opportunity for students who are at the university who are looking for information or projects to, to probably expand on uh, for their, their work, for their degree. And sure. also within the school system and the curriculum, we have a person who is within the uh, curriculum department at, at LPS who's working with us. And mm. that information could be made uh, available for students who will be in the, in the school systems as well, as well. Okay, great. I'm, I'm been following that project. And um, honestly, I wish I had more time that I could um, contribute to it because it's really important work. And I've supported Nebraskans for Peace for years and the NAACP. Um, just to, to expand on that a little bit, is there, uh, you know, an, can you think of other ways that our church members and friends could help with the mission of the NAACP in general, aside from, you know, obviously all nonprofit organizations are really struggling right now. And so we do want to help with um, some resources through the Share the Plate program, but are there other volunteer opportunities or ways that our members and friends could support you um, beyond um, money? Yes, because for instance, I'll just give you an example. A group of us will, on uh, next week, will go and meet with the Department of Education, and we will. We have about five factors that we are concerned with, and I'll just share one with uh, the lack of student, a lack of uh, teachers of color within the Lincoln Public Schools, and we're looking for ways in which we can. Uh, enhance that uh, need uh, within the school system or, or addressing that need within the school system. Uh, and it's not just, uh, in, that doesn't just happen in Lincoln. That's a problem across Nebraska. But, and we're hoping that we can figure out or, or come up with a way that we can do a statewide project that will help to uh, alleviate or address that problem. To attract the more system. people of color to be teachers. People of color, yes. And to our community, uh, which will add to, to Lincoln itself, because if we get people here who are, are have jobs and who are help, helping in the community, try, helping to educate our community, that's a plus for Lincoln all around, not just for the Lincoln Public Schools, but for the city in general. Yeah, absolutely. Are you um, looking for new board members right now? We're always looking for board members. We're looking for workers, people who are, are interested in, 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 in doing uh, civil rights type work. There are a lot of projects that we have going in Vincent. Uh, we just uh, finished the election cycle where uh, we, were, we had uh, members, we passed out over 5,000 leaflets uh, and, and this this doesn't require a lot of time and effort, but it it during the pandemic it it, it took a little bit of creativity. Yeah, and so and we, we did that. And, and yeah. yes, yes, and, and all the things that we do. Remember, we don't have a pay staff, and right. so everybody volunteers their time and their effort. And sometimes my wife said to me. Uh, that's a full-time job for you. And, and it is. It, it's, there almost no day pass that I don't uh, become involved in some way. And sometimes it's uh, someone who calls me from across the state who has a problem and they need some help. 
And so every once in a while, we have to answer the Macedonian call. And but we are primarily working here in Lincoln, and we don't we don't uh, necessarily want to go somewhere else, uh, right? Out of and certainly not out of town, yeah. because it takes time and effort. And 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 so, but we do try to help as much as we can, uh, whenever we can. And and some of the most heart wrenching uh, things happen. Well, someone's in the in 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 the jail somewhere. And they asking for help, and for us to be able to tell them. Most of the times, we have to tell them we can't help them because they need legal help, mm -hmm. and we don't have that, and we sure. and we don't have uh, a, a good a list of persons that we can refer them to, mm -hmm. and, and and sometimes that's all that they need because sometimes they're they are parents who have a a son or a daughter who gets into a situation within the state of Nebraska and they will call us and ask us, well, at first ask us for help and when we can't give them the financial help, at least sometimes we can refer them to so, to someone who can possibly help them sure. or give them some, some advice and if nothing else to try to give them some consolation. Right. Um, so, you know, you mentioned that there's no paid staff. Um, so I'm guessing that everybody works from home that you've been doing things online during the <laughs> pandemic, like we all have. Um, yes. But um, are there other ways that um, other, uh, I guess, what's been the most challenging thing? What, what is, what way has the pandemic affected your work the most? Well, with with uh, people of color, especially African Americans, we are used to that one on one communication. And you go and you call someone, and you uh, are either you see someone at church or in the out when you're out in the certain activities within the community, and you get to talk and to share with them, and and then you you can tell them what you need to tell them because that's the most effective way. Well, now, unless you have their their telephone number or or some way of contacting them, and there that's no sure way that you're going to get them in. Yeah, I really miss trying that. to them. Just you know, accidental. <laughs> yeah, bumping into people and yeah. um, having those yeah. offside side conversations are sometimes, like you said, really important to building community. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and so uh, we miss that, and, and within the uh, community of color, that is probably the most uh, stressful and disheartening thing that 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 goes on because we are struggling to f try to figure out how to get that person, and then how to motivate that person, and and to. Uh, make sure that you're going to be safe if you come out someplace and, and go someplace or do something. And for instance, the, the legislature is in session now. And usually we are down there uh, testifying and we set in, usually set in on a lot of the, uh, the meetings that go on. I haven't been this, this year because I, I have to be careful. And, and, and I, I know that many of the rest of us feel the same way. And so it, it means uh, that you have to do something different from what you are accustomed to doing. And then you always wonder just how effective are you if you are not there in person? Understood. I depend yeah. on a, a lot on the, the, the uh, communication of nonverbal communication when you talk to a person as to, ju to judge whether or not uh, what I'm saying or what I'm doing is, is effective or not. And so, and plus I get to ask some questions that I, I don't get to get asked on, 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 on Zoom. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So I guess um, I want to just ask you, open it up and ask you if there's anything else that is coming up in the, in the near future that's happening this year that you would like our members and friends to know about. Um, any events that you are planning or is there a lot of, are there a lot of questions still about what is going to be possible? It's a lot of questions about what's going to be possible because 
usually we have a, a banquet and that's one of the, the big the biggest activity that we have during the year. And it's usually during the fall of the year. And it's an opportunity where we have 300, 400 people in one room and we get to communicate. And we, it's, a, it's kind of a, uh, an activity where there are people that I, that's the only place that I see them. Mm-hmm. And, and to get that many people in one room who have who are somewhat like-minded is 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 is, is unusual. Mm-hmm. Certainly, when you talk about civil rights activity in Lincoln. Yes, absolutely. So I'm assuming that you did not have the banquet in the fall of 2020, and it's a big question mark no. for 2021 at this point. Um, that's right. It is. Yeah. And that's that. That's that. That was our main income source, and so uh, in 2020, uh, that was we didn't have that source. So it makes a big difference in how we in what we can do and in, in the funds that we have to operate from. Yeah, I want to circle back to one thing also, just real quick, because um, I feel like um, the scholarship thing is really important, and I want to just ask you a couple things about that. Um, I can tell you for myself, um, knowing that part of my money would be used to help with three scholarships this spring would definitely motivate me to give more and. Um, so I just want to ask you, um, are there, uh, what process does a student have to go through to apply? Do they write an essay? They have a two page essay that, okay. that they need to write about what they do or, or, and we always ask them, how do you feel that you will be able to make a difference in your community in the next, uh, five to 10 years and mm-hmm. what, what would your projection, what will you do and how would you go about it? And, and to try to stimulate the discussion so that they can talk about what they're doing and wh- where they wanna go with what they're doing. And, and hopefully we can be able to find kids that are, that are focused and they have been successful in that uh, we know that some of the students, we, we don't ever hear from again, but there are some who we know, for instance, are medical doctors who, who were went through and were applicants and received the scholarship uh, from us. So those are some are, t- some are teachers. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, well, I just so, going to say some are teachers as well. Yeah, perfect. That's what, that ticks two boxes, right? Um, yeah. are, are those open then to any senior that is in the public school system? Yes. Yes. Okay. They must be a senior and graduating senior this year. And they don't, don't have to go to a, a certain, any particular university, but they do have to go to a, a, a school of learning, a higher school of learning, meaning that they can go to a, a trade school, sure. but uh, you know, that, that we, we support that as well. Awesome. I'm, I really like that. And I will definitely uh, watch for the announcement so that I can uh, let people know, you know, I know students that are in the public school system who might qualify. So uh, from that standpoint as well, I'll, I'll try to keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, I really appreciate your time today. I, I want to give you the opportunity to share anything else that you would like to share with us uh, before we close out the interview. But I also want to just thank you for your time today and, you know, being with us um, for the Share the Plate program. Well, I don't have anything else that I can think of at this moment. I probably told you all I, <laughs> all I can think of at the moment. But uh, I, I, I want to thank you and and certainly uh, Unitarian Church there for for this f uh, for this offer and let me have and have a say in on your uh, announcement here. Thank you. Well, we do. We believe in. Uh the advancement of civil rights in our community. And we are doing, um, just to share this with you, we are doing some internal work right now. We are a predominantly white church, as you know, I'm sure. Um, But um, we want to be um, inclusive and welcoming, but we also want to do some of the inner work. Um, We're doing some uh, work on the congregational level to dismantle white supremacy within 
ourselves and within our organization right now. And it's, it's very important to us. And I really want to uh, sincerely thank you for the work that you're doing to, you know, advance civil rights in our community. Uh, it's extremely important and, and we support you all the way. So um, I want to thank you because in your church, because you have, have uh, supported us in, in many ways uh, down through the years. And so for that, we, we, we thank you. And, and certainly any time that we can do something that might enhance your program in any way, let us know. Thank you. We will be looking for ways of partnering and, and deepening the relationship mm -hmm. um, beyond sure. a Zoom interview. And I look forward to that. I look forward to those in-person conversations. Thanks again for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.